The movie begins with Hoven, interviewing Heneral Luna, to publish a newspaper. Then Hoven says they want Heneral Luna's life in their first article. Afterward, Heneral Luna begins his interview by introducing his uniform designed by his brother as he distributes the rest to his army. As Heneral Luna speaks, he tells Hoven that it's hard to unite a divided nation. Hoven nods then asks about the cabinet deciding for the Americans. But Heneral Luna laughs at his question as he shows how chaotic a cabinet meeting is when it happens. At the cabinet meeting, Heneral Luna wants to train the army to fight against the American colonizers, but President Aguinaldo and the rest of the governors disagree with him. Unfortunately, only Heneral Alejandrino agrees with Heneral Luna. Afterward, Heneral Luna tells Hoven in his interview that freedom is not achieved by protecting their loved ones as they have to pay the price, which is blood and sweat. Then, President Aguinaldo reads the Americans' news that they fired their troops in Sta. Mesa. Afterward, Apolinario takes the report as he reads the statement by telling them that the Americans have taken San Juan, Paco, and Pandacan, and other nearby towns. They are also negotiating with the Spaniards in Intramuros, and taking the Manila. Out of President Aguinaldo's dismay, he orders General Luna to lead the war. Later, General Luna and his army, battle with the American troops. While battling, General Luna orders Jose Bernal to send men from Kawit, and tell Captain Janolino to reinforce the left flank as the enemy must not break through. Afterward, General Luna demands his men to fire together as Eduardo Rusca tells him that it would be easier if there were more of them alive. So, General Luna answers him that Kawit troops are on their way. Unfortunately, some of General Luna's men retreat while the others continue to fight. Seconds later, General Luna receives a message from his men that Captain Janolino and the Kawit Brigade refuse to obey. Because according to Captain Janolino, he has no direct orders from the president. Furious, General Luna goes to Captain Janolino, only to see his guards playing the cards while their comrades are dying in the battle. Then, General Luna orders Paco to disarm, and strip their ranks as he ties them up. Afterward, General Luna takes out Captain Janolino from his shelter. Then he embarrasses Captain Janolino in front of his men. Meanwhile, General Douglas MacArthur orders his men to shoot at the battlefield. While General Luna, on the other hand, gets back, and sees his men slowly dying from the battle. So, General Luna takes his horse, and drives toward the base of American troops, but fails to attack. Then he hides on the horse cart as Paco saves him from getting shot. Unfortunately, the American forces retreat as General Luna tells Paco that their victory is not yet happening. Later that night, General MacArthur plans to get General Luna first before Aguinaldo so that the Filipino army will easily fall like a house of cards. While General Mascardo and Captain Janolino complain to President Aguinaldo about General Luna's behavior, President Aguinaldo tells them they will all be reinstated. Afterward, he tells Apolinario about General Luna for embarrassing his men, yet Apolinario says that whatever they say, the fact is General Luna is useful. But then, President Aguinaldo is still in rage as he speaks about General Luna for being arrogant. Going back to the interview, General Luna answers Hoven's compromise question. General Luna says he detests war, and will not compromise with the enemy. Meanwhile, General Luna tells Paco that American troops will not stop until their forces eventually run out. That's why they have to prepare for their last stand. Then, he tells Paco and his other men, that they will retreat north while the Americans are busy fighting. However, Jose Bernal disagrees, and says they don't have enough men to dig that long trench line. At the same time, Paco says that the president will not allow General Luna to do it. Yet, General Luna tells them to give him three days. Later, General Luna arrives from every camp to prepare the military. Then, General Luna brings 4,000 men from every camp to their site the following day. Then he orders Paco to make breakfast for them. Afterward, the 4,000 men begin digging a trench line. A while later, Paco tells General Luna that they need to send man and ammunition to Bataan. So, General Alejandrino answers, and says that he has three reserve platoons in Bulacan that can ride tomorrow to Bataan. But Paco says they need to get there in three days, so General Luna excuses himself as he tells them that he will get them a train. At the train station, General Luna arrives. However, General Luna finds it hard to communicate with the American in English, so he orders Paco and Ruska to arrest him already. Afterward, Ruska and General Luna eat their food in the room when suddenly, Paco informs him that the officers take their family to the train station for sightseeing, making no room for the troops. Furious, General Luna goes to the train as they take them out. Going back to the interview, General Luna tells Hoven that they risk their lives for their families, yet they can't fight for patriotism for their country. 
Then he also reveals that there are only a few patriotic soldiers he met in his life, like Lieutenant Garcia. At the Malabon, the fighting stops around dinner time. Then General Luna says that an American colonel is having dinner in a house. So, he orders his men to attack the enemy while having their dinner. However, no one answers him. So, General Luna asks again if no one is willing to die for their country. Fortunately, Garcia volunteers. Later that night, Garcia begins his mission. He points out his gun at the spot where the American is having his dinner then shoot. While Garcia is hitting, General Luna happily answers Paco's question about shooting the officer instead. He says that it's enough for the Americans to know that the Filipino troops are not afraid. Afterward, he orders Paco to put Garcia in the sharpshooters. Then, going back to the interview, General Luna stops his interview as he tells Hoven to continue tomorrow. Along their way, Ruska informs General Luna that there was a scuffle in a town last night, and arrested several drunk men. Then he says that General Luna's brother is among the drunken men in the jail already, but General Luna laughs as he says that it's just because of a woman. Later, General Luna arrives at his home as Isabel waits for him. Afterward, General Luna spends his night flirting with his significant other. Unfortunately, before General Luna leaves again, he tells Isabel that they will not see each other again. The following day, Felipe Buncamino informs President Aguinaldo that the Sherman Commission wants to meet with them to discuss some terms. Then suddenly, the other governors begin complaining again at the cabinet meeting. So, Felipe waits for them to stop talking. Then seconds later, Felipe continues speaking. He tells President Aguinaldo that the Sherman Commission offers some autonomy for the Republic to protect under America. Suddenly, Alejandrino immediately speaks and says that it would be treason, while General Luna tells them that sovereignty rests only with the Filipinos under their constitution. Then, General Luna exposes Felipe that he worked for the Spanish government and cannot be trusted. Unfortunately, General Luna and Felipe fight because of their argument, but President Aguinaldo stops them. Then, General Luna arrests Felipe and Colonel Roman afterward. After, General Luna speaks at the cabinet meeting, saying they must undergo a radical change to become one nation. Then he also says that they have an enemy more extensive than the Americans, and that is themselves. Later that night, General Luna speaks to Hoven again. Then he tells Hoven that a true son of liberty will never allow themselves to be tied up like dogs. And those who place their self-interests first, those who pledged allegiance only to their regions and tribes, are worse than Americans. General Luna then says that those he said are proof that they are not ready to rule themselves. Meanwhile, President Aguinaldo receives news from General Mascardo that a thousand and a half soldiers, from Pangasinan and Antilocos arrive. Then 400 men that Manuel Quezon brings from Tayabas. And now that Bonifacio is gone, General Mascardo informs President Aguinaldo that every soldier goes to him. The following day, General Luna places his camp at Bagbag Frontlines. Then he listens to Paco's report for the war as Paco mentions General Gregorio del Pilar, who holds the base from the Quinga Frontline. Afterward, he orders Paco to tell General Mascardo to send more troops to Bagbag and Quinga. After, General Mascardo receives news from General Luna, but then he tells the soldier that it is not only the feast that he attends, but also to inspect their troops in a riot. Meanwhile, General Luna talks to Hoven inside the shelter when suddenly Paco gives him a letter from General Mascardo, saying that he'll only go to Bagbag once he's done in a riot. Furious, General Luna keeps sending him a message to do his order, yet General Mascardo refuses to obey. So, he orders Roman to send a telegram to every official under Mascardo, and tell them they will report to the main headquarters in Pampanga tonight. Next, he demands Ruska to apprise President Aguinaldo that General Luna plans to arrest Mascardo if he keeps on disobeying his order. Unfortunately, General Luna and Mascardo end up fighting in Guagua. Afterward, President Aguinaldo receives information about the trouble brewing in Guagua. Upon arriving at Guagua, General Luna informs Isabel to tell General Mascardo to surrender peacefully. However, General Mascardo still refuses to obey as he will only follow orders from President Aguinaldo. Suddenly, the American troops attack Bagbag. While General Luna, on the other hand, deals with General Mascardo in a riot. Fortunately, General Luna successfully arrests General Mascardo, but Ruska informs him that the Americans attack Bagbag and Quinga. Meanwhile, at the Bagbag and Quinga, Hoven hides as Gregorio fights with his men. However, the American troops finally invade their camp, and kill most of General Luna's men. Then suddenly, the sharpshooters, including Garcia, arrive at the base to fight with the Americans. The following day, General Luna and his men, leave Bagbag as the Americans take Quinga. 
Then Paco tells General Luna that Gregorio and his men, retreat to San Fernando. At President Aguinaldo's new headquarters, President Aguinaldo talks with Apolinario. He tells him they should ask for a ceasefire to speak with the Americans, but Apolinario says they are unsure how much America is willing to sacrifice. While talking, a soldier informs President Aguinaldo that Luna's outside. Upon entering, General Luna gives President Aguinaldo a letter to resign as head of the army. He says that it is impossible to do his job under the circumstances, and after knowing that Felipe and Paterno, the traitors, get out of jail. But then Apolinario says that General Luna may be a military genius, but he doesn't understand politics. So, General Luna says that if setting traitors free defines politics, he wants no part of it. Nonetheless, President Aguinaldo refuses to accept his resignation. So, General Luna deals with the president to erect a fortress up north if he doesn't want him to resign. Luckily, President Aguinaldo approves. Afterward, General Mascardo, Felipe, and Paterno tell fake rumors about General Luna to President Aguinaldo. Fortunately, Apolinario defends General Luna to them, but still, the traitors disagree and convince the president to replace him. Meanwhile, Loriana Luna, General Luna's mother, enters his room. Then she checks General Luna about his condition. Then she orders General Luna to close his eyes as she begins storytelling about their family. Afterward, General Luna escorts his mother outside and listens to her. Then, Loriana tells General Luna that President Aguinaldo is included with the people plotting against him, but General Luna refuses to believe. The following day, President Aguinaldo prepares his men for the war. Later, General Luna receives news from President Aguinaldo that he has built a new cabinet, and wants General Luna to go to Cabanatuan to lead. Then General Luna informs his men as they congratulate him. Afterward, General Luna and his men, go to Cabanatuan while Hoven asks Paco some questions. Unfortunately, some of General Luna's men cannot cross the river. So, General Luna appoints Ruska and Paco, to go ahead first while Manuel will catch up with them in Cabanatuan. Then, he lastly orders one of his soldiers to take care of his comrades. General Luna orders Ruska and Paco, to wait for him outside upon arrival. Afterward, General Luna walks toward the room when suddenly he finds Felipe sitting at the president's desk. Then he asks Felipe about President Aguinaldo's appearance, so Felipe says that the president already left in the morning. Afterward, Felipe tries a duel with General Luna when suddenly they hear gunshots outside. The movie ends with General Luna getting numerous shots by Aguinaldo's men as Captain Janolino also shoots General Luna's right eye and left shoulder. Then, Captain Janolino orders his men to end his life with a sword. However, General Luna still fights despite bathing in blood. So, Captain Janolino shoots his head to end him already. Then, on the other hand, Paco gets killed as Ruska surrenders and gets into jail. Unfortunately, no one admits to General Luna's death conspiracy, even Felipe, who witnessed the killing. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.